What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing great. Going to do a quick spread offense clinic for everyone and the theories behind the spread offense and why coaches go to it. And this is um, specifically done as it relates to both the offense at East Carolina uh, under Donnie Kirkpatrick and what Carolina is attempting to do under Phil Longo and the theories behind um, what they've been doing the last 25 years in college football. And what I want everyone to understand, whether or not you're an offensive or defensive coach, football is a numbers game. It completely equates to how to match up, how to get yourself from the best one-on-ones, the best two-on-ones if you're an option team, uh, the best um, way to stay sound defensively to make sure I'm not outflanked with point of attack and so on and so on. So what I've done up here is I've drawn up two formations. Okay, and what I mean by uh, core on each side of the football is how many guys in these formations can be designed as run blockers, all right? So we're talking about how can you effectively run the football out of spread sets. And on this first one, I've got a basic 11 personnel concept with a Y, a tight end or an H back. You could also put this guy on the line of scrimmage and make him a sixth man on the offensive line at the tight end position. And then down here, we've got what we call a 10 personnel concept, meaning there's one back, no tight ends. Up here, 11 personnel concept with one back, one tight end. All right. Some people would call that 20 personnel because that guy's in the backfield, two backs, no tight ends. Either way, you've created what you call a six man core up front, meaning whatever scheme that you use, this tight end, though he's an eligible receiver, can create an extra gap on either side of the football. And because they have the ability to create an extra side, extra gap in the running game, the defense must equate numbers to stop the running game. They're creating an extra gap. Therefore, I must get that extra hat in the box. Down here, we don't have that tight end, so there is no threat at an extra gap unless you run the quarterback and or and use the back as a blocker and we can reach somebody. So we're going to talk about first the six-man core because this is the kind of the base set that schools like Carolina, that East Carolina, North Carolina, Oklahoma, uh, basically that use the air raid principle. If they want to run the football, they're starting with this first and foremost as a base for what they do. Um, you know, some guys deviate a little bit more from this, like Lincoln Riley, for instance, at Oklahoma uses more traditional two-back stuff where this guy's not in the picture and there's another hat down here. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Only one guy can carry the football and the other guy's going to be used as a lead blocker, a pass catcher, or whatever in the core scheme. So where this equates to, if you ever listen to Urban Meyer talk, you know, like I read his book and this made more sense than to me than anything, is there is a lot of option principles in these things of, okay, how many can we block? And if we don't have even numbers, how do we even out the numbers? And if there's no way to even out the numbers, we obviously have to throw the football because that means we're going to have a numbers advantage in the field. So drawing up some defenses, you're going to get basic, you're never going to get a six on five against any defensive coordinator that has any idea what he's doing. But on six on six, and I've got the ability to run the football, I want to run the football. So a six-man box, let's draw you guys up a different color so that you can see it. Put it in purple. Some of this will look a little bit different, but this is a basic 3-4 defense. Let's say they start in too high. That is a six-man box, and when I for, for when I say six-man box, I'm talking about a situation on where the ghost tight end would be over here, really for right here. So I have six hats right now that can block that. Where defenses have got so good over the last couple of years is the ability to get plus one defender. When I was a GA for Rick Smith at East Carolina. He used to talk about bonus linebackers. Where do you get that extra hat at the blocks? So in a basic defense now, that plus one defender is going to come from either the nickel Sam, we 
which is this guy right here, or it's going to come from the weak side safety. Okay, the moment that these two guys are getting too much involved in the football game, this can become a six on seven game. Okay, once this becomes a six on seven game, or if they're both involved, a six on eight game, we have to get out of strict straight up handoffs with no RPOs and no ability to run a read option concept. What RPOs, what run pass options give the offense and what the read option does, it basically allows you to have your take at either two. If they outnumber you, for instance, in a read situation, uh, let's go in a circumstance or a situation where I undo this box right here and I get this uh, same look. If I know this guy's going to come in to fit and he's coming, well, we may be able to read one guy, sift, arc release, and now the quarterback's going to give, is going to give or run the football based on what this guy does. Uh, it could, so that allows me to even out the numbers because now I'm using the running back in the core. All right, so I've evened out the numbers because now I have the ability for the quarterback to make this an eight on seven game as opposed to a seven on seven game. And I've got six blockers for six and I'm reading the seven. So that is spread theory 101 if you want to run the read option concept. The other way to handle this, if we go and try and give you guys that same picture again, is if that guy's going to come, get this one out of here too, if that guy's going to come well, I can also make this guy the read the flipper. Whoops, I'll do that a couple of times around. I can now make this guy a read defender and I can throw the football off of him. All right, you've got all various kinds of routes. For instance, uh, if you watch Carolina with Phil Longo, they love what I call the sights route, where it's five steps and inside. All right, and if that guy's coming, I know I've created a one-on-one -on -one out here in this particular look, but I'm still running my core scheme for where now we double team to that, they double team to that, and then we're here and we're here. So I'm still reading that, that new seventh defender who wants to either blitz or get a little too carry now in the box. And now I'm throwing the football off of him. Either way, I've made myself in a six on seven game where I can run or pass based on the scheme we have called. Basically, what I have to do when they want to get this guy involved in the scheme, I'm talking about these plus one players, is I have to have some type of read component to either throw the football or run the football out to even out the numbers. Now, on the weak side, one thing that you see, let's say if they want to get this safety involved, let's do some erasing here. Let's say they want to get this weak safety involved in the run fit, they're going to drive him up in the hole. What you see a couple of people doing is you can throw the RPO where you're throwing the slant behind him, what we call the bang A route, where if he wants to come up so hard, I'm now going to get my eyes on that guy. If he comes up, I'm going to raise up and throw that ball. You see uh, both those teams, both Carolina and East Carolina, use that one quite a bit. Or you know, if you're a team like Louisville, who's not as good at throwing the football, but they specialize in a read option and then holding people on the backside with the bootleg off of their outside zone action. You know, you might see them get into a situation where, change the color here on my pen, where we put the back here and we're now gonna read this guy. We're gonna arc and block that safety right there. And then we zone block everything on the backside. Either way, I have now read a defender to either throw or run or read a guy in a run scheme for an unblocked half. So if I've got either way kind of winding down off of this six man core, if it's six on six, I've got enough hats to run the football. If they get greedy trying to get a seventh man in the box, or if they line up with the seventh man on the box, I've got to RPO or I've got to run some type of read run scheme. All right, if it's six on eight, 
for instance, let's say we get in a situation where they bump these linebackers over, they've got this free safety down, and they walk this guy down, and they're playing straight cover zero across the field. There had even in an RPO, there is no run option to that. You're running to unblock hats. You can't read. They still have an inch cat when you read a guy. We got to throw the football right now. Conversely, let's erase all this. When we get a five-man core, what are we going to get? Well, the numbers just change. They vary five on five. You should be able to run the football. Now, a lot of times when you're in these sets, if they give you a five-man box and it's third and ten, you know, that is what it is. This is why it's really important, guys. You absolutely have to be able to control the line of scrimmage when you have even numbers because if you can't make one-on-one -on -one blocks or you can't combination block two for two, then you're just you, – you have no chance. It allows the defense to really sit back. But the same action, let's draw up some type of six-man box right now. Let's go Colors so you guys can see where if you get a six man box, or the mic and the wheel at that point, I can no longer run a run scheme out here without the ability of the quarterback being a runner. So, my options here would be some type of zone read where I read that guy and if he wants to crash down, I can block, block, quarterback, pull it out the back door. Uh, you can run some type of quarterback draw action. Let's so say we go here, we go here, we isolate, we're here, we're here. They combo to the wheel and now the quarterback's runner. So the back is at least even out the numbers to where it's six on five. But what you're seeing more and more people do out of this, guys, is throwing the RPOs, okay? By that, what I mean is, okay, I might have an inside going called. Quarterback sees it, okay, they're five on six. I have no read component to this as far as me running the football as the quarterback. So you might see bubble with a slant. So if these guys just want to play run all day, we're just going to read this hat out here knowing he can, he doesn't have to become a plus one defender, so he's a primary pass defender. Let's run some type of flat defender beater. You know, it could be something as simple as, um, you know, we know they're in main of the slot fade with this guy running a little hitch where I know I've got a matchup with a fast guy on one of their safeties of their corners. So the only time I want to run with a five-man four is if I get a five-man box, which is going to cause them to play some type. Let's get this all erased. Another offensive lineman up there. Where now they're going to play some type of two man's uh, two deep scheme like you've got up here in this picture, you know. But they're trying to get that plus one defender still here, where he becomes the six man in the box. Uh, you know, they remove one of those. It's still just the numbers game. So you'll see a lot of the theories where the same RPOs matter. You know, you see this one a little bit more to where if they want to bring that guy off the edge, I know I'm in man. You know, have some type of run called, but the moment they start shooting these two outside backers in here, whip the thing out there for an easy completion. So spread football run one on one, even numbers run the football. Outnumbered by one, create a read player and RPO play. Outnumbered by two, gotta throw the football. Thank you.